Hey everyone, this is Google Kickstart round H 2020. This is the last Kickstart round of 2020, but this is actually my first Kickstart round personally. So we'll give it a shot and see how it goes. So there are gonna be four problems and in each of them you have to solve a different algorithmic challenge. And so here, it took a little while for the problems to load, and I think I actually started on problem B first. Just because that problem statement loaded first. And so in this problem, a number is called boring if all of the digits at even positions are even, and all the digits at odd positions are odd. So for example, the, they tell you that 1478 is a boring number. And you're given L and R, which can be really big numbers between one and 10 to the 18th. And you need to count how many of the numbers between L and R are one of these boring numbers. And so, so right here, I'm, I'm just copying the uh, test case so I can have it in files to run it later. And so for this type of problem, what you want to do is first you can realize that instead of let's instead of thinking about counting from one to sorry from L to R, let's think about counting from one to n instead. And so if we have a function called you know f that counts the number of boring numbers between one and n, we actually just want f of r minus f of l minus one. And so that's what I'm doing here with the solve function. Uh, just special case zero in order to be safe. Otherwise, what we can do is we can take the number n and write it as a string. And then we can do something called a digit dp, where basically we build the number we want from left to right. And there are actually only two things that matter as we're building the number. So first of all, we want, we want to make sure the number we're building is no bigger than n. And the way we do that is when we build the number from left to right, if our digit is less than a digit, uh, the corresponding digit in n, then the number we're building is already smaller than n, so we're good. The only case where we have to be careful is if we match the digits of n exactly so far. So for example, if, we're, if n is one, four, seven, eight, and we start with a number that's one, four, we have to be careful that we can't, for example, make the ne next digit be a nine or an eight, uh, but it could be a seven. Whereas if we start one three, then we can just have a nine next and that's totally fine. And so that's why the state is only which digit are we on and then a bool, whether or not we are matching the current number. And then one other thing to be careful of is we don't want to start numbers with leading zeros. So that's why I have this. Um, oh, I actually didn't add it yet, but that's why I'm going to add something in here, which basically makes sure that we start from a positive non-zero digit if the current digit index is zero. Yeah, and so that D loop you see there is just iterating uh, which of the values the current digit could be. I actually forgot to read L and R in there when testing earlier. So finally I actually tested, I got the first case wrong. So still fixing one issue here. So that if was for the leading zero case. And then here I actually realized I need to not just recurse on zero, but actually add up all of the um, recurse values for each starting point.
and that way we can get not just numbers of the same length as n, but then even shorter numbers. So for example, if n is 125, we can still count a number like 98. So this wasn't completely necessary because I tested it locally, but I was just testing on the kickstart system to make sure that everything is running fine. You click on the little eye icon and then you can check the output. And so that was all fine, so I submitted. And it takes a while to, to judge, so I actually just jumped into problem A instead. So in this problem, you're playing a game and there are end levels and you're on the kth level but you just realize that you forgot to get an, a pass beat. You realize you forgot to pick up a sword at a previous level where you need to go back there and get it in order to finish. And so you're trying to figure out the fastest way you can finish the game. And you have two options. One is you can just restart the game and do everything again from scratch from level one. The other one is, is you can go backwards in levels until you get to level S grab that sword, complete all of the remaining levels, and go to the end. And so you're just trying to figure out which of these two options is better. And so most of this problem is actually just making sure you understand the problem statement and implementing the ideas described. So for the first option, if we just restart the game, then we already spent k minus one time, k is the current level we're at, to get to our current level. It takes one more time to restart according to the problem. And then it takes n time to finish, so that would be n plus k. And then the second scenario is from k we go to s, we're guaranteed that k is bigger than s in the uh, input constraints, and that's an important thing. So we, first we already spent k minus one time, then we spend k minus s time going back to s, and then finally we spend n minus s plus one time to finish. So again, we just add all that up, and then we take the min of the two things. And so here I actually forgot the k minus one in the second case. So I think what happened is, right, so I, I got the sample case wrong. And so after a quick reread of the problem statement, I found what I was missing and just added in the k minus one to the second case. Yeah, one, one note here is if you do have sample explanations and you get the sample wrong, make sure you go through those because they can be pretty helpful to figure out what you're missing. Okay, so we fixed that. Now just submitting here. So now we're moving on to the third problem. In this problem, you have a bunch of rugby players who are at different XY coordinates. And they want to, and so we pass that problem. We want to get all of the players into a setup where they're in a line all next to each other. So someone is at x, y, someone is at x plus one, y, someone's at x plus two, y, and so on, up to x plus n minus one, y. And we, we wanna know the minimum number of moves we need to do that, where a move basically consists of moving one step up, down, left, or right. 
So the first thing we realize here is that the coordinates are independent. And so because we want everyone to be at the same y coordinate, we can just solve the y coordinates first. We basically need to move some of the y's up or down by one at a time to get everyone to the same y. And this is actually, this is a well-known problem where it turns out you just want everyone to go to the median. And the reason for that is if you think about the meeting point and you think about moving it up one or down one, the median is the point where basically moving it up one or moving it down one does not improve it any further. And if you're farther away from the median, then there is a direction that you can move the meeting point to improve it. The way to think about that is, for example, if you if you have 10 people, let's say their x coordinates, or sorry, their y coordinates are 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to 10, and you have them all at meet at 3, well then what if you moved the meeting point to 4? Then the meeting point would be farther away for 3 people, namely 1, 2, and 3, but it would actually be closer for 7 people, which is 4 through 10. And so in that case, you want to meet anywhere between 5 and 6, which are the two medians. And if you do that, then moving the median point would not, or moving the meeting point would not improve anything. And then after that, the question is, how do you handle x, where instead of meeting at the same point, you want to meet at x, x plus 1, x plus 2, so on? Well, first you can show that you need to sort the x's. And so, for example, if you want to have, if you have people at, say, coordinates 1, 3, and 7, and you want them to meet at 3, 4, and 5, then you can say that 1 should go to 3, 3 should go to 4, and 7 should go to 5. So they go in the same order that they were going before. You can, you can prove this with an exchange argument where you assume that it's not in order and you can do a swap that makes it more in order and, and you can show that this makes the cost better. And so once we sort it, then we can realize that there's a cute idea here where we can do a transformation where we replace xi with xi minus i. And now instead of wanting to meet at x, x plus 1, x plus 2, and so on. We actually just want all the x's to meet at the same point. And here in this code, I actually, I, I went down a wrong path for a bit where I started using this technique called slope trick, but then I realized actually that that is not um, the right case for this problem because slope trick lets you um, find the minimum cost to make something non-decreasing, but actually in this case, we just want to make all of the x values the same. And the funny thing is that becomes, again, we just go back to the same problem we solved for the y coordinates. Yeah, and so I'm deleting the code because I'm realizing it's not the right thing to do here. Yeah, we just do the same thing again for the y coordinates, um, this time for the x coordinates where we just find the median uh, here I'm finding the median using nth element, which takes O of n time instead of n log n time. But you can you can do sort as well and take n log n time. That's totally fine here. So I find the median and then add up the differences between all the x values and the median. And then that gives us our answer. Unfortunately, I have to reselect the language every time. So I, I almost always get a uh, submit that doesn't go through on every problem because of this. And I have to remember to pick the language. But we did submit that problem, and now we're taking a look at the last problem. So for the last problem, you have n people. And each person has a unique name. The names are uppercase English letters. And we see that. They have a funny setup here where we say that two people are friends if and only if their names have a common character. Okay, and we see we did get the third problem correct. And right now we are just behind Andrew or Ecknerwalla, who's 
a couple minutes ahead on the third problem. So two people are friends when they have a letter in common in their names. And if they don't, then they're not. And we're trying to find kind of like the distance between two people where we want to find the shortest friendship chain that connects them. So for example, if person X is friends with person Y and person Y is friends with person Z, but X and Z are not friends, then we have a chain of three between X and Z, which is X to Y to Z. And so we're given a bunch of queries on pairs of people, and we want to find these distances or these shortest chain lengths. So the way you can think about that is if we have a chain between two people, then for each consecutive pair of people in the chain, we can basically assign a letter that they have in common. And so we have this chain where each sort of edge in the chain or each connection in the chain is a letter, right? And so you want to find the chain with the fewest letters to get there. Where the best case is, you know, a chain with a single letter, meaning that the two people are friends because they have a letter in common. So we can do this funny thing where we actually think about the problem instead of letters being edges and people being vertices, we can flip it around where letters are actually the vertices and people are edges. So people basically are edges between all of the different pairs of letters that they have in their names. So if, if someone's name is ABC, that means they have an edge between A and B, between A and C, and between B and C. And then it turns out that really what we want to do is we want to build this graph of size 26 with 26 vertices and you know maybe 26 squared edges. And then we can find all the shortest paths in that graph using an algorithm called floyd warshall um, floyd warshall it sounds a little scary, but it's actually super easy to code. It's just three loops in a row. And then once we have those paths ready, then when we get a query, we have two people's names. And we, we really just want to find the shortest distance between any letter in the first person's name and any letter in the second person's name. So here in the code, I'm just setting up the actual edges. So I create a bit mask for every string of which of the characters are in that string. So I actually don't care if the same character is in multiple times. I just need to know if it's in or not. And so each, each bit mask is between zero and uh, two to the 26. And then the X, Y loop above is just to find the pairs of letters that are connected by this name. And then the Floyd Warshall is this uh, triply nested KIJ loop. And since our graph size is only 26, the time for that is only 26 cubed, which is not a big deal. And then finally, when we get a query, we need to iterate through the letters in the first string and the letters in the second string, and then just take the min over the distances over all of those letter pairs. So the, the ifs here with the masks and the shifting, that's just a quick way to tell if the letter is in the string. And then lastly, we need kind of an infinity value. Here I picked alphabet plus one. Um, that way we know if it's not possible, in which case we print negative one instead of uh, any other number. And so here I get zero one on the first case. And it turns out the reason for that is, for example, let's say that the two people have a letter in common, then the letter distance that we find should be zero, but the, which means the, uh, the number of letters that we use to connect them is one, right? 
because let's say we use letters a b c then the distance to a between a and c will be two but that means we use three letters right and so the number of letters we use we actually need to plus one again to get the number of people in the chain and so we actually want distance plus two and so just fix that bug in the code and needed to bump up the um, kind of infinity value just to be safe. And then went for a submission here. And so now we're just checking whether we got it correct. And uh, for the runtime, it's 26 squared uh, per query, which is not too bad. It, it actually turns out to be fine. Looks like we're still running. The 26 squared actually might be a little slow. That might be why it's taking a little while, but we were given 40 seconds. So, okay, yeah, we were fine. We passed it. And so we got everything. Um, so second place overall, because we, we didn't get any penalties, so we can't fall behind. And Andrew or Ecknerwala beat us by just one minute. So good stuff to Andrew. And yeah, that's the end of the video. Kickstart round H2020. Let me know if you have any thoughts below and I'll see you next time.